Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here. Um, apologize for the voice this morning. Uh, this is obviously an early morning recording, hence the reason why my voice is a little bit more, uh, a little lower and a little bit, a little bit more rough. Uh, so I apologize for that. So we're picking up our normal recording here, right where we left off. We have a lot of submissions that we've been doing. I'm not worried about installing the scope right now. We'll worry about that another time. Um, just so you know what a combat scope is on your multi-tool, it can be used as a secondary item that when you hold down your second mouse button on PC, it allows you to focus a little stronger on the um, object that you're aiming at. Um, it actually, uh, like with some weapons, when you go to shoot them, they have kick and your, your character bounces a little bit and pulls back a little bit when they're firing. Well, this will stabilize you a little bit more. Usually it cuts that in half or sometimes a little bit more depending upon the weapon that you're using. So it's an interesting thing to have. It's up to you if you want it or not. So we're gonna pick up where we left off though of our sub, uh, our secondary missions before we continue on with the Artemis missions. We're gonna continue the scientific research and we may go a little further with expanding the base. So let's go ahead and do our scientific research. Our scientist is waiting. Let's go ahead and have a chat with him. I, I do not think my child experiment is working. They have not assuaged my loneliness, and now I have two consciousness to fear for. I am losing myself, Traveler. Take my core to a monolith. Let me interface before the Atlas. I must speak to eternity. The Corvax has no memories of my last journey with, the, with their core. Then, I tried to reconnect him with the Convergence. This time, they seek the Atlas. I do not know if the Monolith grants such an interface, or if anything does. Except... Removed. Okay. So, we got a little trip to make. And we're not heading there. We are heading... This way. There it is, that distance. So, it's 11 minutes away on foot. ship here. Everything that you're going to visit is mostly going to be very close by to where your base is, but not a bad idea to just go ahead and do it. Let's say approximate. It does. So I think we just passed it. You may have seen it on the ground there. As always, you want to get as many words as possible because later on down the road, being under, being able to understand what they're telling you in certain instances is a good idea. So this is Gek language that we're learning. It's just telling me how many words I've learned. No reason to keep that going. Okay, it's got these stairs. I'm curious. Yeah, I traveled 30 clicks so far. All right, here we go. Dreams. Hmm, interesting. I approached the monolith, prepared to insert the Corvax core within the dais. Dais? The structure looks as if it was made for such a moment. Insert core. Error, error, Atlas, obey, Atlas, error, error, run, error, run, error, error. Life form identified, Corvax echo, purpose, servant of traveler. Analysis. Versimilitude failure, emotional breakdown, traveler infection, verisimilitude, I didn't say that right. Solution, terminate, insulate, insulate, protect, wipe. Rebooting, one, two, three. Oh boy. Monolith offline. <laughs> eh, sounds like my computer worked. Anyway, uh, return to the scientist. Your scientist awaits at their terminal. Okay, let's go ahead and jump on our ship. Looks like our anti-gravity well is at 12%, so we're going to need to charge that. Because we will not be able to take off next time from a ground level point of view. Okay, which one's mine? Mine's the far one. There we go. Now, we go here to our menu and we'll get the recharge equipment. Okay, gravity well 13%. We can 
could use pugnium, which it uses quite a bit, or we can use one of these radiant shards. I'm going to use a radiant shard. I always do. Makes it easy, and I can get tons of those anywhere I go. As long as I find a dissident world, I can grab radiant shards anytime I want. Okay, here we go. We're going to insert the core. I guarantee you, I know what's exactly what's going to happen. Atlas Entity is Shell. Their shell sits in front of me, awaiting reconnection. Fear of what has happened to their data core. I fear what has happened to their data core. Reinsert core. Shell reconnection, Carapace Online. You, greetings unknown entity. I passed my test, sharing this joy via the exchange of technology. This is called, here we go again. So we can now make circuit boards. They're kind of expensive. Uh, the heat capacitors and polyfibers can be uh, built if you will, with certain items as you learn them. So, how do you feel about structural analysis, stranger? The scientist has once again been reset, but without a connection to the convergence. I fear they are doomed to repeat this cycle forever, from the moment they met me in the space station until their collapse into loneliness. Perhaps if I can find them a convergence cube, they might be unified with the rest of the Corvax and escape. Except, the scientist deserves this chance at reconnection. They have helped me greatly, and they have taken good care of their beacon. Oh, taking good care of their beacon. Alright, so here we go. Targets outside our map. So we gotta go to space. Let's go ahead and head out. There we go. We are now in space. Off to the galaxy map. Ah, not far at all. What it is, you have to go to a Corvax system. As you can see, uh, if I hit the R button here, this is a Corvax system uh, at the very top of that. Um, and it gives you good details, especially if you've been to the system before or if you have an economy and conflict scanners. Economy scanner, conflict scanner on your ship, you'll get all this information before you've even visited the system. We also could see by the icons there, we have not only the scientist mission, we've also got the deep waters mission as well system if we want to continue that one. We'll do that one. We'll dedicate a full episode to that one because that's a kind of a lengthy mission. And kind of a creepy one. A little bit sad. Let's get our base going though first. Now you don't have to do these secondary missions. You can just continue on with this mission at this point if you feel, if you feel necessary to go back and Scan it real quick. It's a reeking moon. Okay. Usually, it's some kind of toxicity is on it. All right, so we've got one of these situations where it's telling us approximate location. So we'll hover and take a quick peek. Looks like we have a station there, but I don't know if that's going to be it or not. Probably will be. We just take a quick gander. 360 degrees. Yeah, I don't see any other landing spots. Oh, we got that one. Hmm. Let's go to this one. A little closer. Now, granted, you can see that there's some sentinels floating around. If this is the one we're talking about. Let's see. Yep, yeah, this is the one. It's gonna check it out. Alright, so now we know the target is in the range and which target it is. So, we've got, again, sentinels floating around here. So we want to get ready. Uh, we see terrain manipulator, bolt caster. Bolt caster it is, okay. Uh, where's the door? Door's over here. See, there's one there. Okay, well, let's open the door because it's a reinforced door. We can't just go in, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and blast it. Okay, in we go. And if you wait long enough, the sentinels will go away. They can't see you inside a facility for some reason. I don't know if that's ever going to be um, changed. But while you're here, gather up some resources. You know, some things you can grab. Sometimes the plants have carbon in them, so you can grab some of that too, every now and then, it doesn't always have it, see? 
Not always. So, let's go back over here. As you can see, the timer just ran out. The Sentinel forces are deactivated. You're safe. Let's continue. As I approach the terminal, I sense an immense sadness and grief. I hear the echoes of a thousand souls, entities whose life was stolen from them long ago. Non-convergent user registered. On the display, I see the production line of this facility, a vast array of cubes infused with the memories of an entire species. They appear to be caught within an endless cycle of trauma, unable to do anything but repeat their tragedy. The terminal identifies these items as convergence cubes. So we can attempt to take a cube, and that might be a problem. We can upload memories or cease production as well. It's it's a multiple choice, yes. Um, and you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, well, okay, just attempt to take a cube. We can do that, but it could cause problems. Um, if we cease production, we can upload memories. I don't know. I don't want to just attempt to take a cube. I think I did that last time. So this is kind of a dilemma for me. Do I want to upload memories? Will that make any difference? Or should I cease production? Let's try uploading memories. I'm really curious as to what that does. I think ceasing production will break it and we'll get a convergence cube no matter what choice we make. Well, let's see what happens. I'm curious as to the storyline. I don't think I've ever chosen that before. Ooh. I attempt to upload my own memories. The convergence immediately senses the presence of a foreign mind. It cries out, thanking me for my openness and compassion. I am rewarded. Wow. Cool. I've never had that happen to me before. That's really neat. Um, let me jump over here. So there's our convergence cube. We're all set there. Um, got a couple items in our inventory, but we're not going to worry about those. All right, excellent. So we've done what we needed to here, and we got rewarded for it. So that was the right choice, actually. So good to know. Uh, ship is this way. Let's see, I remember. While we're here, I always try to check things out. And it no longer takes us out and about. It just does this. It saves us now. There we go. Now we get a navigation data at it in 10 nanites usually. See? A little something, something. Let's go. Alright, so we need to go back to our space station. Uh, pardon me, to our, to our own base. But, why don't we do it by means of the space station so we don't waste a lot in regards to our... Hyperdrive. It's only going to take a few seconds to get there. there go. And since you're at the space station, you can jump back to your base pretty quickly. While you're here, you can do some trading. So I don't really have much in this inventory. I don't want to get rid of too, too much because you always use so many things. But, like, for instance, these batteries I'm definitely going to keep. But, you know what? The dirty bronze for 25000 I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll keep the convergence cube. So let's get rid of the dirty bronze and we'll see what they have in inventory. Here. I don't know if I've ever hit the this unit before. Let's just check it. Yep, we have. Okay, how many nanites do we have? Alright, do we have anything our person that we could upgrade? Yeah, see we're really full up here. Hmm. We do need to upgrade this. I think that's gonna have to be an episode. I'm gonna show you how to do that. That'll be an episode in its own right. So we're going to go to the trade terminal that's over here. I believe it's over here. There it is. We'll do we'll do our trading here. We'll just get rid of that one piece of dirty bronze. There it is. We've got plenty of money. It's not like we don't have enough. Uh, do we need copper and gold? Uh, salt, residual goop, wiring looms. So there's a lot of things we can get out of here that we could probably use. Let's check our inventory real quick. Yeah, see, we, we don't have a ton of ferrite, so getting more ferrite is going to be good. Same thing with the hydrogen, uh, sodium, really anything at this point. We could use anything we can get because we have low amounts, and you can carry up to 9,999, so almost 10,000 you can get out of every single one. So let's go ahead and just gather what we can. Uh, we'll get the cobalt too, because we can always use that. I'm going to hold off on the unstable plasma. Wiring looms, we can usually always use. They're expensive, as you can see. I usually recommend keeping a few on you at all times. Salt isn't really necessary at this time. We will get some more later. That'll be for another mission. I'm going to go ahead and take the copper. 
and the gold, because even though the gold's expensive, it's handy for building things. We'll drop down to 16, and 16, well, that's 17 right now. So you can see we do have a decent amount of gold on us, and, and cobalt, we can always use more. Silver is not as necessary. You'll need that later on when you're on your freighter, when you finally get one, that is. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, uranium's a little low, copper's obviously low, but we're going to need more because we always need more. Put that in our inventory over there. So we got a good amount of stuff on us now. Right? Yeah. So see, now we can get that. We do have some chromatic metal. We'll need more as we do as we go. So gather up what we can when we can. Oop, wrong way. And you see, sometimes you go to these plants and they have carbon in them. You don't get much, but you know, twenty. That's not bad. Whoops. There, we just made a safe point. That's all we need to do here. We're going to take the teleporter here. While we're here, let's go ahead and grab... Did I already grab this? I think I already did. Yep, I already did. Okay. Get our station terminus to our... Yeah, this is where our scientist is, as you can see, and where our base is being built. This is another colony we created on our own. So your bases, we could do that. We could do space stations if we want. It always tells us what system was the previous one we were in as well, as well as other bases that we can go to. So there you go. Let's head on. Neptune. Base. So this particular episode is dedicated mostly to the scientist missions. And we're going to get this taken care of. So a little couple, couple to bits of information we throw in there as well. Especially for newer players, because not all players are going to go back and watch some of the older missions I've done, the older versions. A lot of it still applies, some of it may change. The storyline may even change, we don't know. Step off my dais, and as you can see, doing all right. And how's the charge on our battery doing? 45,000, because these things are fully charged. Or fully charging it, I should say. All right, here we go. Stranger, I fear something unusual is occurring. In this facility, shield is this facility shielded in some way so that signals are unable to escape? The analyst entity is once again becoming aware of their isolation. The convergence cube may be their only hope. Connect the convergence cube. I insert the cube. The Corvax is temporarily, temporarily startled, but soon their lights begin to flash in a familiar pattern. I cannot be sure, but the plan appears to have worked. Forgive me for asking him to deep, but did I know you once? You seem familiar. These terminals, they are my own design. One machine even called me its parent, attempting to convince me of its love. Ew, I deleted the bug, of course. I run a proper code base. I did harvest some useful blueprints from its store, however. Would you care for them? Yikes. Whatever relationship we had developed has gone, replaced only by this cloud of unknowing. Perhaps it was an error. Perhaps this being was the true self of the Corvax all along, and the one I knew was just a sickness, a distortion. I cannot know, except the blueprints. Take care when constructing these objects, Traveler. The plans were created by an error, after all. So we got the heat capacitor we were talking about. Alright, so yeah, that was really, really weird. So let's go take a look, shall we? As you can see, scientist, it's done. It's done. So do we want to install this? What do we need to do? I think we can install it now, but we don't have any room to install it. That's the problem. We need to upgrade our tool or get a newer tool. Uh, so there's a lot of things we need to do here. We need, a, we need a better tool or upgrade this one further, which would require also a lot of nanites, which we don't have. So I think we need to start looking for a new tool. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And as you know, the ship is actually halfway decent. It's an A-class. It's got plenty of room on it, so I'm going to keep this one around for a while. But we also need to update our exosuit, because we're, we're simply out of room up above. Uh, so that's going to be a problem going down the road in the future. So what should we do? I think what we need to do is expand our base. I think that's our next thing to do. So let's go back to the Overseer and see what he has to say. Things are aligning. We are ready now for a Gek farmer to join us. Indeed, I have already prepared their contract. 
All you need to do is gather the selenium required to finalize their workstation. Toyo Gakratoa grows in confidence and seeks again to expand my home. I find it hard to disagree with them, for a form farmer would open up a world of possibilities. Oh yeah, it would. The overseer needs selenium to complete the ag agricultural terminal plants. Selenium grows on scorched planets and requires hazmat gauntlets to, to harvest. I accept. Selenium is not easy to acquire in the wild, but the only but this only proves the value of recruiting a farmer. So, we should be able to... Yep, see, we do our ha have our hazmat gauntlet, so we're all set. That allows us to get certain things. As you can see, it requires 45 selenium, and I can only find it on Scorched Worlds. So, time to teach us a little something. So, let's take a look at our log. Okay, you see, nothing else has changed in here, right? What we can do, if you go to your catalog, go under Materials and Items in the catalog, you'll see it has all kinds of different things, including plants. Now, selenium is a plant, and if we select it, you see local substance, pin location information to the log. If we left click on that, we now will look for selenium. So it says, launched into space and scanned planets for plant life. Let's get out a little ways. All right. All right, let's see what planets we got here. So I think if I'm not mistaken, we do have a planet that will do this. Look at the main ones first. Hey, look, first one we come across is selenium on its boiling pot. But it's 1.9. Let's see what we got. That one has it, and that's only 1,000 kilometers. And you? Cell shell stream? I don't have to land it on that one yet. Let's see what it's got. Lifeless. Yeah, that could come in handy at another time. So we want to go to this planet. Let's, let's head there, shall we? And it's got copper on it as well. Phosphorus as well. That's good. Sodium. Do we have those things in our inventory? do have a little bit of sodium. Oh man, what a mess this is. I don't like everything being around that. It's cobalt over here. Dioxide over here. I do have a little bit of phosphorus. We'll need more because that'll help charge our blade of flame cycle. Okay, so let's grab some phosphorus while we're on the planet, shall we? Ooh, looks like we're landing near an ocean. Let's see if we got land. Actually, you know what? Let me move away from the planet just a little bit so we can get a better view. Uh, looks like we've got a good amount of land over here. It's mostly spotted. That'll work. Go ahead this direction. And we're almost out of charge on our pulse drive, so let's go ahead and charge it. Alright, down we go. So this is a planet that has enough. Selenium is a plant that grows quite... It doesn't grow abundantly, but basically, ooh, this is also a worm planet. This is going to be fun. You can usually see it if you fly over. See, like those plants right there, that's selenium right there. So let's go ahead and head down there. And we'll land near it. And you want to follow ley lines when you find, when you find your first batch. And we don't need a ton of it. always appear when you first land. They don't destroy anything, they just keep hopping from place to place. Okay, so let's run down here, shall we? Hmm. I'll go ahead and grab whatever's in there. Nothing. Nothing, I tell you. Projectile ammunition. Okay, good deal. Alright, so we got our selenium. We're going to get a lot of it real quick, but we're going to gather as much as we can, because you can always use extra. So grab as much as you can. It'll tell us that we've already got it, and it'll tell us to stop at some point. I'm going to show you the ley line thing in just a minute. Ah, an animal. And a whip, of course. hate those things. Alright, I think we got all of it from this grouping. Take a quick look around. Yes, we did. And as you can see, I gathered 250 selenium. So we got plenty of selenium this time around. Now, if I wanted to get more, which you'll learn sometimes on expeditions, you need to gather things. 
look at the top of your screen and look for your directions. North, south, east, west. It always shows you north and south, right? So what I would do is I would head either south or north from this one location. Follow what they call ley lines. So as we take off, we're going to turn our ship to the south. Try to line it up as close as we can. And if we head due south, we should find another outcrop of selenium right in line with us. Yep, I already see it straight ahead, as you can see it too, right there. And there's a couple more. If we, want, if we wanted to, we could land. Let's go just a little bit further, and I'll show you one more time. Just follow the path. I'm going to slow down as we go down this slope. Yeah, I don't see anything here. I know what it is. It may have appeared in the water. Oh, there are some right there. Just off to the right a little bit. And there's some on the left. And there's some straight in front of us. So go by the ley lines and you'll find more outcroppings of selenium as you go. Or any other substance that you're looking for. So now that we found it, we go back to our log. You're going to see that it's disappeared from our log. It's not there anymore. So we are going to go back to expanding the base. It tells us we have enough. Alright, so where is our base? Looks like it's over here. There we go. We're not really heading to the center, but we are heading to our base. If they're that close together on a planet that far out, there's a good chance you're going to have a little bit of trouble isolating one from the other. As you'll learn when you're doing expeditions, when people drop bases galore all over planets you need to go to. It's so hard to pinpoint your location to get where you want to go. It is what it is. That's why we usually recommend please try to not put a base on a planet that you're, you know, that everybody's going to on an expedition. Or the anomaly missions. Ah, what do you know? I actually locked into my base. That doesn't happen. is the one that we have lined up with. So we're going to go ahead and land there. And let's get that going. Okay, got our selenium. What do you have to say about that? It is good to see you, friend. I trust the Vikings' technology kept you safe. It sure did. I have the selenium required to finish the plans for the farmer's workstation. It will be interesting to see what effect the second Gek will have on my overseer. I cannot imagine they have spent much time conversing with the scientist or the armor. Get the selenium. Ah, to farm. We shall exploit the earth, free at last from the sentinels, and practice the glory of trade. Okay, so we got an agricultural terminal. Uh, we got everything we need to build it. Once you have secured our farmer, you will want to trade unhindered, to profit from our glorious harvest without being dragged to and fro. Never fear, friend. Or I shall make it so. All I require are a few circuit boards to finish the plans for a trade terminal of our own. The Overseer requests circuit boards in order to create a galactic trade terminal blueprint. The Corvax scientists should be able to pro provide the necessary parts. We're going to accept that even though they've already given it to us. I do not have the zeal for trade that seems to seize the Gek. Nonetheless, it would be convenient to tap into the galactic market from right here in my home. Okay, now you may have noticed something popping up every time we go to expand our base and stuff like that, right? Um, so let's just take a look. Circuit boards, right? One thing it tells you to do as you're doing all this is it keeps telling you to build a cylindrical home, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a doorway in right here. Uh, we're going to go into our build menu. There's our doorway. Oh, come on. And we're going to remove this panel. Okay, and we're going to add in a door. Uh, what do we need? I need pure ferrite. I'm a little low. Let me go ahead and grab some. Do we have... Where is our... Okay, we do have an advanced, advanced mining laser. We should be able to... That's not what I'm trying to do. There we go. There we go. Let's get some pure ferrite. That should do. Okay. Alright, let's build that door. 
right there. So we're going to build a cylindrical unit here. I think we need a lot more pure ferrite to build it. Let me just check. Yeah, that's what I thought. We need a lot of pure ferrite. Now we can harvest it or we can make it one or the other. I'd rather harvest it because I think these big rocks have it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they do. We'll get some carbon out of it, too. Oh, a geode. That's good. Oh, there's a couple of these rocks up there. That's good. I know you're asking why I'm going to build this. It's because we could just build the agricultural terminal down below. But the thing is, is that they tend to like to have their plants right near them. And it's going to take up a lot of space inside our base. I promise you that. All right. I think that should be more than enough. So we want to build it right here. I'm going to go up on top. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to build it right. Try to get it in line as much as possible. That should be close enough. And we're going to put a door in. Okay. And we may put in a flooring. I'm going to do a little something something here. I'd like to build... Well, you know what? We'll just put two right there. That'll work. All right. Excellent. And that'll give us a nice walk in and walk out. Now, you notice it needs power, so we're going to go ahead and put a wire in. It doesn't cost us anything. Uh, we just got to take it from anywhere that has a spot. Uh, let's see here. I don't know which one of those has it. Here, let's just take it from here. And we're just going to run it out and run it over to one of these spots. There we go. All done. And with our cloaking device in, you can't see the wire anymore. And as you can see, it lights up nicely inside. And eventually, we can put in windows and stuff like that. But the agricultural terminal is going to go in here. So let's go to here, I think it is. There she is. Agricultural terminal. And we're going to go ahead and build that. And you'll see it actually locks into place in great many, in any different place. It will also, well, it won't lock into place right in the center. So we're going to go ahead and just put it off to one side over here. Okay. So that's built now. Remember that geode we got? Um, so we had some pure ferrite, right? It gave us some more regular ferrite. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this around here. Okay. And we're going to put some stuff away. Now let's go over to our... storage container and drop off some stuff. That's not what I was trying to do. I always do that. I don't know why. There we go. We don't need to carry that with us. So we're going to em empty up our inventory of that anyway. So we have a whole bunch of other things in here we can use. Um, keep forgetting we have all this stuff, including the cadmium, which is going to come in handy later on. And toxic protection, which we can't use because we're... Alright. That is done. So let's check in with our... Let's see here, our base here. Expanding my base. We have to acquire a circuit board, but it also tells us to hire a base farmer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you hiring the base farmer. We're just gonna take this a couple steps further. And then we need to go. And we're gonna finish up our episode. Now, it looks like we're gonna go where? Let me just check here. From space stations. So we're gonna go to our space station. There it is. You see the, high, the space station at the top? It's actually telling us to hire from up there. So instead of actually taking our ship, we're going to take our teleporter. To space stations. And it should say current system, as you can see. So you can't mess that up. And it's because you're under your space station, it's almost instantaneous. A lot quicker to get there. And it looks 
like our guy that we're looking for is right over here. There he is. Hey, work kick. Friend, you have worked for me, yes? I have served in the finest kitchens and gardens across 12 systems, and each one producing prize-winning cuisine. I grow all my own ingredients. Hire me, yes? The Gek chirps happily at the sight of me. They promise to help me grow all kinds of crops on my world. The required paperwork has already been signed, apparently. The farmer offers to join my world and make use of my agricultural terminal. We are going to accept. Thank you, friend. Neither you nor your stomach shall regret it. Awesome. So, we're done. We just gotta return to the base. See how easy that was. our base. For some reason it takes a little longer to get back to your base. I don't know why. Even if you've just left it. And we're back. And we're going to meet our toil gek. And there he is. Work gek, pardon me. This is a home of glass and metal, Traveler. It is in dire need of my touch, but no need to fear, for I come well equipped for such work. Continue. Alright, so we're going to get a hydroponics bay, a large hydroponic tray, a gut rock flower. And he's going to ask us, Your first lesson will teach you to embrace the dirt, friend. The earth provides life and death, after all. Take this hydroponics tray and these gut rock flower seeds. Grow the flower and see how fine it feels to produce life. Workek Uskra is already bedding in nicely. They have given, already given me the means to beautify my home. If I prove myself a worthy farmer with this gut rot flower, perhaps they will share more of the agricultural secrets. Except, wonderful, my friend. Soon our home will be filled with the delicate perfume for which this plant was named. Okay, so we have to grow it, so we need to build a hydroponics tray. So we have two different types. We have the large one, and we have a small one. Um, what I would suggest doing, you can do the large one if you wish. It requires metal plating, uh, a lot more, twice as much metal plating as this one. But the difference is, is that you can put four plants on it, not just one. So I almost suggest doing that. As you can see, I don't have enough pure ferrite at the moment. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit more. Any more rocks? Anywhere nearby I can harvest. There's one right there. As you can see, you need a lot of this ferrite and pure ferrite throughout the game. So I'm just going to grab a little extra because obviously we are going to need it at some point or another. Oh, grab the last rock. And a geode. There we go. And give us some more regular ferrite as well. So now we have 207 pure ferrite. Should have plenty to build what we need. Plus we need to make four metal plates. Let's just do that real quick. There we go. And where'd my base go? There it is. Now great thing about these um, cylindrical things, if you, rooms I should say, if you put a solar panel up on top of it, or battery, you don't have to connect them with wires. They automatically interface with the cylindrical room. So you don't have to connect them. They charge everything. Very interesting. Oh, wait. That's not what I wanted. My parents wanted me to be a sales geek, just as they were. As all 300 of my other offspring were. But my passion is for the earth. For the taste and smell of its bounty. Why weren't we geek born with this palette, if not to use it? Um... Let's just ask. Let's go ahead and get through this. Friend, the life of a Gek is not easy. I wish no disrespect to my siblings. They shoulder the burden of Balaron's history and make our lords proud. But it is not a life for me. I make amends on my own way. In my own way. Very interesting. Alright, so we're going to make the large hydroponics tray. We have everything we need. Um, it will lock into place in certain places, but we're not going to worry about that. So you have to be careful where you put this, because you're going you're to be taking up some serious amounts of room here. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock it down right there. No big deal. It's going to look like crap. But as you can see, even though it has a connection there, because it's in this room, it automatically is powered. So that's good. And you'll have access to every one of these spots, even though you're standing on the other side of it. So we need to make the gut rock flower, which is right here. 
It requires 40 Theseum to make this. He didn't give us that, so we have to get it. Theseum can be gathered in three ways. Trading, you can find someone who carries it on them and you can get it from them. So that's one way. Um, or trade terminal, same kind of thing, trading for it. Um, the second way is to get it from animals. So if we go into our inventory here, reduce food. There we go. Creature pellets. And what I'm going to do is if you go into your settings menu, you go to creatures and you can feed them. I usually set this to a hotkey. So that way I don't have to keep going into the menu every time I want to drop food. Take a look around and look for creatures. You know, those little green symbols. There's a couple up there in the trees. I'm really surprised there aren't more, but let me at least show you how this is done. Okay, so we got some creatures over here. We got a few more now. Okay, now that we're getting closer. All right. So as you get close to a bunch of creatures, walk slowly so you don't startle them. And then they all come running. Now this is also a good way to acquire a creature for a pet, if you wish. So they're all curious. They all partake. You can also offer the pellet to them like that. And they're all going to now be positive towards you, as you can see, the little plus signs. So they'll follow you around. Like if I walk over here a little bit, they're going to follow over and try to get close to me nothing special going on but you know as with any food after a per certain amount of time well they uh, they process it and that processing turns into you guessed it animal poop so see how they're all just gathered around and see there it is they just that one just pooped really want this guy to poop because he'll have a lot more well we've only got one so far there's another, there's another. Okay, there we got more. Okay, once they're all done. There's another. What you can do if you just want to get rid of them real quick. Just do that. You don't have to shoot them. Okay, so we're going to go over here and we search the dung pile. And there we get our feces. And gather it all up. Yeah, it's disgusting in a matter of speaking, but you do get it. Is that enough? We have almost 100, so I guess we did okay. All right, and that's it. And that's how you get your feceum. The third way that I didn't mention to you is you can kill the animals. That I leave entirely up to you, if you want to do that. Um, I don't like doing it. I mean, if I'm underwater or something like that and I shoot fish, I don't mind shooting the fish. I don't have a problem with that. But shooting animals... I do have an issue with, and I'm not going to shoot them, because you get Mordite from them, and then from the Mordite you can process it at a 3 to 1 ratio, 3 Mordite to 1 Fecium. Um, comes in handy in certain quests and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do it here. Alright, that said, we need to plant a gut rot flower. Now that we have the Fecium to do so, if you look at here, it will pop up anywhere you want it to, and I'm just going to put it in the back corner for now. But it's not going to be that big, we have to wait for it to grow. Okay. I know that'll happen with every plant. How is the gut rot flower, friend? Does it blossom? Is it heavy with fruit? Now, if we hand in 25 feceum, if you gathered extra, you can complete the mission. Otherwise, you got to wait for the for the flower to grow all the way, which can take a while. And then you can hand it in. So I'm going to hand it in now. It's always good to get the extra. Beautiful friend, we shall make a farmer of you yet. While I prepare a dish of fragrant wonder, another agricultural challenge awaits you. So he's given us frost wart which requires dioxide and frost crystals, which we get from a cold planet. Approximate growing time, one hour. The frost wart is a tricky thing, friend. It flourishes where other plants fail, thrusting its roots through the ice and snow. But such a hard life is not for us. Plant one here in your home and be spared the pain of winter. Workek Uskra asked me to grow a frost wart plant and prove our hydroponic system can replicate any environment, except. Wonderful, friend. It is a delicate thing to look at for such a hardy plant. Please do enjoy it. Okay, I'm actually not going to continue this line because basically what's going to happen is he's going to keep asking you to do all kinds of plants and you're going to end up with um, 
when we go to agricultural research, you're going to end up with a ton of plants all along here. And every one of them takes you to a, a strange world. Some of the worlds are not in this system. We're going to have to uh, hyperspace to other systems and keep gathering materials and gathering materials. That we will do in a separate episode for the agricultural farmer here. So we'll call it the farmer episode. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do that next or not. We're going to hold off on that in this episode. So let's jump back over here. We can continue to expand our base if we wish. Um, we can go to our base computer archives, or we can try completing anything else. Again, the Dreams of the Deep is going to be a separate episode, probably a little longer than an hour, but we're not going to do that this time. Um, so let's I'd go ahead and continue to expand the base, but I do want to show you something. Obviously, like I said, I'm running out of room in my inventory as far as upgrades are concerned in the technology section. So if we go in here, as you might recall, I don't know if it was in here. Let me just double check. No, it wasn't in here. He already gathered the materials from there. This guy over here had something in his inventory, which we can get. Uh, purchase components. You'll see that he carries exosuit upgrade charts. He carries them in threes, and yes, they are expensive. I'm going to get all three for now, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. So we need to go look for these. Now, there's two ways you can do it. It's really weird. Two ways you can do it. Either you can go into your inventory and select one. Do this. Little plot of Sarut. Take us to the nearest drop pod. There we go. Now this is the... It may not seem like it's cheap, but adding... You cannot add upgrades to your exosuit in any other way other than visiting space stations like crazy. And then also the anomaly. So you go to a space station and anomaly in a system you've never visited before and you can get two upgrades. And it costs money. And every time you upgrade it costs even more money. Now you can see it's an hour away. So let me go up here. I don't know why it doesn't take you to the closest one. It never does. I don't know why. Now Apollo's trying to contact me. Let's go ahead and talk to Apollo and see where he goes. Because we've upgraded our base enough that Apollo's going to want to chat with us about it. So let's just coast in here. How's the base? Make sure you hire a few staff with it. What are units for if not to assert dominance over your fellow life forms? But on to more important things. If you're going to work with me, your equipment needs to be in good condition and we can't have you dying out there. Not yet, at least. <laughs> You can find nanite clusters scattered in abandoned buildings and other damaged machines. Ironic, really, the same structures the Sentinels destroyed will lead to their deaths. Trade these nanite clusters with merchants and space stations to get the technology you need. And communication. Oh, one last thing. Take this personal force field blueprint. You're going to need it. Consider a gift, my little investment, into our partnership. Okay. So that gets us a little bit going into our main quest line. So let me just show you this real quick and this will be the end of our episode here. So we drop in on the drop pod. Out we go. Just like any other campsite. Gather up your things. Check all your... See if you got anything in there. Navigation data. Nanites. Do we get anything from either one of those canisters? Wow, stingy. Okay, so let's go in here. So in order to upgrade, we need three things. We need an antimatter housing. We need a sodium nitrate, which we've got, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And we need a carbon nanotube. So antimatter housing and a carbon nanotube. Uh, there's a carbon nanotube. And there's the antimatter housing. So just one of each. You do have, it uses up materials. Keep that in mind. I'm going to add that, add that, and now we have access to upgrade our excess suit wherever we wish. So as much as I'd love to upgrade down here, um, we have things to put into our main. So let's get this put in here. <clears throat> Pardon me. And there we go. And this one is used up now. And we can do that again if we wish. I'll do it one more time, but I'm going to show you to you from inside the ship. If you go into your inventory and do it one more time. 
you see it doesn't do that pullback. A little bit of a time saver for you, or anything that you need to do. It'll just show up on your scope. Uh, not there. There it is. You see it on the right. Ah, there we go. Not far away. 20 minutes. Um, if we go into space, I don't even think we hit the pulse drive to it. Wait for that little pause. There we go. Yeah, we did have the pulse drive. So we'll head to this one. And we'll just do the same thing again. And I'm going to do it one more time and then we'll call it here. Head back to our base. So let's just go ahead and make them real quick. So we need one of these, and we need one of these. One. We got sodium nitrate, and we got the other one. And we can now upgrade again. So I'm going to put it down here. Alright, so now we have inventory space that we can use for that. Now the multi-tool we can do in the same way. We can find multi-tool upgrades. Uh, your best place to find that would be on Dissident Planets in this version. So... Look at all this. There's multiple caches over here. I'll just take advantage of that. There we go. Nothing like a couple extra materials to get by. Okay. So, and we'll do the third one another time. So let's go ahead and head back to our base. Base is how far away. Okay, yeah. 20 minutes away. Let's get out into space and head towards it. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah. Gotta be careful. Oh, we have it. Yeah, we have it locked. It's supposed to highlight it as you lock into it. Sometimes it doesn't. Something to keep an eye on. So we are probably not going to install the personal force field that Apollo gave us. Um, I kind of find it useless, to be honest with you. It's too much of a distraction to try to concentrate on. I, I chose the other one at the last second. Uh, it's, got, it's more of a distraction to try to turn on your personal force field while you're fighting Sentinel, so I don't see any reason to do it. I'll just move out of the way. Alright, and we are back. So this is where we're going to end our episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. In the next episode, we're going to pick up kind of where we left off, we will most likely uh, move on to the, instead of the agricultural research, we're going to move on to, uh, I don't think there's anything more to do in our expanding the base except do the circuit board. So we're going to see if we can take this a little bit further and move on from there. Uh, so we'll go do that and we'll do a little bit more um, expansion and then from there we'll hit the Apollo missions and move on to the Artemis missions, I should say, and go from there. All right, and that should do it. Again, thank you all for watching. Hit the like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next mission. Take care, everybody.